A thanks to the publisher for the review copy. Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Now the review codes for this game only came in at about quarter past 3 p.m this afternoon. As I sit here at recording this video, I've sat with my daughter and we have played for I think 6 hours and 15 minutes straight and we've loved every single second of it. There's a poeticness to it as well because I was her age when I played the very first game. Return to Monkey Island is more than a title, it's a return to form for the series and something that we never thought Ron Gilbert would do. It takes place after the events of the second game and while there are references to Curse and we'll pretend the 3D episodic ones just don't exist, you'd probably like to know how it performs on the Switch, what it's all about, without any major plot spoilers of course, and whether it's backlog be damned, and you're gonna chuck this to the top of the pile. Well, let's find out. Before you even begin the game, you can go through a scrapbook which details the events of your previous adventures. This means if you've never played a Monkey Island game before, well you don't need to have done, but you, you, really, you really do need to have done. The pirate leaders were in charge of the three trials, acting as judge, jury, executioner, and devoted grog tasters. If you haven't, I wouldn't suggest jumping into this. I would say go and play those ones. You can pick them up very cheaply on other platforms, and they recently did remastered versions of those as well. Although the scrapbook will detail some of the other events, and there are many references throughout the story of characters you will have met along many of the adventures. I'll keep things very vague, but Guybrush acts as the narrator telling a story to his child, and it often cuts back to him detailing some of his more nefarious exploits. I was a little skeptical at first, but it works brilliantly, and it does something that Curse didn't do for me, it gives it a real sense of heart. Although they'll be very vague, the next minute is going to contain some generalised story spoilers. If you'd like to skip that, then just click the timestamp above. The overarching plot here sees Guybrush once again returning to Monkey Island, after realising that LeChuck has once again found out how to get there, but also how to unlock the secret. The journey will take you across several islands, and it follows a similar premise to the first two games, being much more focused on a set objective. It does involve you travelling to many different islands, and where it excels is in its humour. I've laughed more in the last six hours than I have done probably in the last six days. Come on, Murray. We've got our work cut out for us. I don't relish the idea of being with you, but I guess it beats spending the next hundred years on this stump. The writing Maybe. is on point, and if you head to the sound options, you'll even find what's essentially a director's cut that adds in a load of extra dialogue at the cost of some pacing. A really nice touch for long-standing fans. I was intrigued as to how they'd approach the gameplay this time around. Just as with its predecessors, you can choose either the casual mode, which has more of an emphasis on story with more simple puzzles, or the hardcore mode, which does exactly what the original said on the tin, and introduces way more puzzles, more lateral thinking, as well as some more classically adventure game style ones that are a bit off the wall. Whether or not they'd stick with the traditional point and click, or try and evolve it in some way, and they've gone for the latter. You'll directly control Guybrush with the left stick, and dotted around the screen will be several interactable items. These can be accessed by using the right stick rather than having a number of icons or a system where you hold a button down and select the eyes or the mouth or the tongue, this time it'll be a simple button push. It's much quicker than the older games, which also extends to your navigation thanks to a handy run button. If you were concerned like I was how the controls might affect the overall feel of the game, you'll be pleased to know that you still combine objects within your inventory. Sometimes you'll need to examine things within there, and although you are shown what items are selectable on the screen, I found that the puzzles just clicked mainly based on my prior knowledge of the series. Another concern I had was that it would simply be a trip down memory lane, a fan service nostalgia trip that didn't really add anything, but actually it feels like a real refinement of the adventure game genre, and it'll be interesting to see where they can take this exact formula. As you'd expect, you will get to sail your own ship, traverse the wonderful Monkey Island in all its glory, and even explore a few new locations. While I opted to go with the new format of not having the on-screen text, which did feel a bit odd at first, you can choose to have that if you want the original feel. Now, Guybrush is equipped with a handy checklist. This does exactly as you'd expect, and keeps you on track. What I wasn't expecting were the little trivia cards, which are scattered all throughout the game. These go within your trivia book and essentially ask you a question. Those questions 
questions will be based around your knowledge of the series, and while I haven't collected them all yet, I should imagine they unlock something pretty cool. Finally then, there's a hints book. Now this is certainly not something I had with the original game, and it's heavily suggested that you try not to use this, but if you find yourself completely stuck, it will initially give you a very vague hint, and then gradually give you more and more, until it essentially points you in the right direction. As far as the system goes, this is as good as it gets, but I would say, do not use it. Just don't use it, pretend it doesn't exist, and also avoid it completely and go with the hardcore route. As nice as it is bumping into familiar characters, it's the hundreds of tiny little details that have been carefully placed within the game that you'd only really know if you played the titles before that genuinely put a smile on my face. Silly little things like Stan's outfit with its Czech design. The pattern in the original game stayed in the same place and they've replicated that perfectly. But my biggest takeaway here is that nothing feels forced. It feels like a natural continuation of a series I absolutely love and as much as I wanted to enjoy it, it's easy. It's easy to enjoy, it's easy to have a good time and it's easy to spend hours and hours laughing with. The control changes are smart and make it feel like a more modern game and I think fans and new players are going to love it. My only critique really would be maybe a couple of the puzzles which were slightly too off the wall but generally they felt maybe a bit easier than the previous two games. And the controls only became a problem if there were many different icons on the screen and you're scrolling through. If you had a mouse and were able to go directly to the one you wanted, it would certainly be better. But that's what you get on a console, and it still feels really solid. Overall, I give the gameplay 19 out of 20, and the controls 18 out of 20. Whenever I hear the words fans and backlash, I kind of roll my eyes involuntarily. And when I heard about the fans complaining about the art style they'd chosen here, it just baffled me. If they'd have gone for a classic style as the originals, people would have complained that they hadn't done enough to change things. And they have the two extremes of that really within their recent repertoire. Thimbleweed Park, absolutely incredible game, but I'm glad they didn't make Monkey Island in that style. Broken Age was also brilliant, but it was too far in the other direction. What they've got here is somewhere in between, and it works perfectly in my opinion. The reimagining Imagine locations are wonderful. There are some nods here to Maniac Mansion and Day of the Tentacle, and while those inverse kinematic style puppet animations that you saw in Flash games could be a comparison point here, I think they're stylistically done here and it looks brilliant. As far as the audio goes, my goodness is this soundtrack on point, but for me it's the voice acting work here that stands head and shoulders above almost every other element. That's a nice ore. The one with the coffin, yeah. The coffin had a lot of water damage when I got it from the voodoo lady in town. Anything I can do to help you, let me know. As long as it doesn't involve selling you a ship. It's the comic delivery and the synchronicity between the visuals and that voice acting that will make you laugh out loud on multiple occasions. Absolutely fantastic. It's also running at 60 frames per second. And while there are some graphics options, I'm not sure how much of a difference these really make. I give the visuals 19 out of 20 and the audio 20 out of 20. Return to Monkey Island will set you back £22.49, at least if you're on the Nintendo Switch it will, but it's 10% cheaper elsewhere in its digital form, which does annoy me a little bit. I know we talk about the Switch tax, but it's still real in some sense, but getting past that, the value is certainly here. It's an incredibly slick and enjoyable offering, and while yes, I have basically sat and finished it in a single session, I would suggest taking your time, playing through much more slowly, and searching out all of those different trivia cards. I think you could easily push your playtime to 10 hours and then play through again with the director's cut. It's a prime example of length not being the defining factor of its value. I give the value 19 out of 20. We thought it would never happen, and here we are. Let's be honest, we also thought it wouldn't live up to expectations, and yet here we are. Return to Monkey Island is one of the greatest adventure games I've ever played, and it does justice to its predecessors. If you're a fan or new, you owe it to yourself to get into this series, and it gets a Switch Up score of 95%. I think we can replace the Gold Seal of Approval and call it the Devolver Seal of Approval, because those guys know how to pick quality. I can't remember the last time I played a game had zero bugs, 60 frames per second, and just, yeah, an almost flawless experience in both docked and handheld. Thanks to all of you, I know I'm a massive Monkey Island nerd, and I probably got a bit over the top there, but I think it's a fair score for the game that we've got. For all things Switch, oh, a big thanks to our Patreons as well, and if you want to save 10% on this price, you can use code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg to buy your eShop credit. So there's your 10%, there's the Switch tax. <laughs> 
for all things Switch, all the time. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!